Romans chapter 10 verse 14 to 15 How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? Today, I am has sent a preacher in the person of Evangelist Rodney Brown, your humble servant for Christ's sake. And now, Evangelist Rodney Brown. Welcome to part one of this three-part series of how to unmask a potential partner. How to unmask a potential partner? And I'm glad you asked, because you are going to leave here with some key tools to unmask people before you indicate to them that you want to live with them forever. Roland and Joanne is a story I'm going to tell you about in a while. But just before I tell you about them, you know Dr. Maya Angelou, one of our philosophers, once said, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. So Roland and Joanne were engaged to be married. They were both professionals, and Joanne worshipped the very ground that Roland walked on. She was really, she was the personification of submission to, to Roland. Um, one evening before they went out, Joanne's father asked her not to come back in too late. They went out and they had a great time. But when they came back, it was like 1 a.m. in the morning, Joanne's father said, but Joanne, look at the time. You didn't call. I was worried I could not sleep. Joanne said to her father, but I'm a big woman. I am in my late 20s. I'm a professional. I have my own vehicle. I turn my own key. What is the problem? Do you see a problem? Is there a red flag that you're seeing right now? They got married. A couple months after they got married, Joanne went out as she would usually do. And she was asked by her husband not to return too late. You know where I'm going with this. So she went out and she came back about 1 a.m. in the morning. And her husband then, Roland, said to her, um, so why are you so late? I asked you to come in early. I was worried. You didn't call. Joanne said to him, but I'm, I'm my own woman. Uh, I drive my own vehicle. I'm a professional. I turn my own key. What is the problem? Did Joanne change suddenly? Joanne didn't change. Joanne is the same Joanne. He would have expected that the same treatment that he was getting from her before would have continued into marriage, not realizing that Joanne had developed a particular character. Joanne was wearing a mask when dealing with him. What is masking anyway? Masking is a temporary change in behavior to impress a potential spouse. There's a school of thought that it is not possible to see through a mask. And even Forrest Gump will tell you that life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get out. Let us see what they are showing us. Let us see what they are showing us. You are about to develop a unique skill set to see beyond a mask and get greater insight into what a person will turn out to be after you marry them. That's if you decide to go that way. Before getting into the meat of it though, let me cover a few things very quickly. Very, very quickly. What is the purpose of relationship? Ask yourself that. What is the purpose of relationship? 
I really like relationships. Having a girlfriend is awesome. In my lifetime, I had two girlfriends, officially. I just felt so, you know, you know, on top of the world by, by the thought that somebody's actually interested in me because I knew since my early teens, I knew I, knew I wasn't a mess. So it was really something exciting just to think that somebody's actually interested in me. We spoke on the phone all the time. We, you know, we, we, we went out. And you know, mind you, speaking on the phone then meant something different from now. It was a real commitment to speak on the phone then. Because to speak on the phone then, you had to stop everything else you were doing. There was a cord that attached you to the phone, whether it was on the wall or whether it was on a handset on a table. It was a real commitment to speak on the phone. There was no Instagram. There was no um, WhatsApp Messenger. What else is there? There was no Telegram, the, the new Telegram that they now have that's like, um, that's like WhatsApp. There was no WhatsApp. There, there weren't these things. So you really had to commit some time to speak to anybody on the phone. And at that time, I spoke for hours on the phone. We held hands. We kissed. Oops. Yeah, we did kiss. And I want to, to indicate that I, I wouldn't recommend those kind of husband privileges given to boyfriends at this point. But that's another discussion. So the difference between the two relationships I had, and mind you, the first one was when I was 17. The difference between the two relationships that I had was it didn't take the first one, the first girlfriend, six months to realize the mess that I was in. The second relationship I had was 10 years later. And on the 25th, sorry, oops, I make a mistake like that. On the 11th of February, and I knew that I was just testing everyone. On the 11th of February um, to 2020, we celebrated 25 years of marriage. Relationships are great. What is the purpose of relationships? For a Christian who is walking in God's plan, having a boyfriend or girlfriend is that wonderful first stage of a lifelong companionship. However, for many who are not spiritual, it is a period of part-time companionship during which the body may be exploited and may be cast aside for something, you know, a little upgrade, for something better. It may also be a trial period before official companionship. But because people are convinced that you can't tell what a person will turn out to be after marriage, whether they would be a drunkard, whether they'd be an abuser, whether they'd be a homosexual, whether they would be going to be a, a killer, they, I, I, I guess tryout relationships are really important to them. But even during that trial period, it is unlikely that you will get the vital information needed to make a proper decision because of natural masking, which is a temporary change in behavior, as I said before, to impress a partner. Some people recognizing that the trial thing is risky, they resort to things like dating, which still does not give the, and I'm telling you again, dating does not give the vital information necessary to make a choice because of masking. Some, um, some still insist that they need to do this to find out who the person is. I'm saying that's a bad idea. Then there are others who just throw their hands up, they give up, and as an old um, Trinidadian saying goes, see me and come live with me, it's two different things. So I'm just going to make a commitment anyway. But is it really true that you can't see or you can't tell what a person will turn out to be? I am saying, I'm suggesting to you, I'm submitting to you today, 
that it is possible and you are about to learn how. But what kind of person are you looking for? What are the characteristics of your knight in shining armor? Or if you are Jacob, what are the characteristics of your princess Rachel? I got a list from some young people. I'm going to tell you some of the things that were on that list. Wise. A potential spouse or a spouse should be gentle. A husband or wife, as far as they're concerned, should be compassionate, selfless, loving, thoughtful, respectful, submissive, thrifty, protective, and generous. These are some of the things that they said. The question remains, how would I know? How would you know? Remember, as I said before, you can unmask and see the hidden person before a relationship. Let me just clear up a few more things very quickly before beginning this three-part series on unmasking a potential spouse. One, significant observations are best made in groups where people socialize, where they work, where they live, and even where they serve. And my mind goes back to observing a particular individual, you know, where we served on a particular mission trip. Key observations can be made during group activities and interactions like hikes and camps and, and stuff like that. Two, more significant than unmasking a potential spouse is unmasking yourself. The Bible, like a mirror, actually gives more info on examining yourself than unmasking, unmasking others. While we're going through this three-part series, I want you to ask yourself a particular question. Am I the person for the kind of person I want? I want you to ask yourself that question as you hear these things come up. Ask yourself, Am I the person for the kind of person I want? The truth is, the more ideal you are, or the more you resemble a 1 Corinthians 13 lover, is the greater the chance of you being able to live with anyone. That doesn't mean you just go, although God gives you free will, it doesn't mean that you just go and pull any Tom, Dick, or Harry. That, that is not what God is saying here. God wants to be in on that choice. So what does God say about that ideal choice? Bearing in mind that ultimately, it is not what you want, but what God wants. Since we all want wise and un, an, a wise, sorry, and an understanding spouse, let us hear what God wants. Now, we are going to get into James chapter 3. All right, so you may as well turn to James chapter 3 one time. And now, the original, the original uh, intention of this passage is to show how faith produces wisdom. We are going to view this passage in a practical light to see what characteristics of a wise person we can observe in a potential spouse. James chapter 3, verse 13 to 18, and I'm going to read it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show. Let him show, and that's significant. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace 
by those who make peace. Amen. Let us now look at the person you may be interested in through God's lens and a biblical vision. These are some questions that you can ask yourself if you want to unmask someone using God's filter. These will be best observed before the obscuring smoke screen of dating. Remember, they are best observed in groups where you serve, where you work, where you live, where you socialize. These are some questions you can ask yourself, as I said before. While looking through this lens, you will discover that neither you nor your potential partner are perfect. This does not mean that you cannot have a successful relationship. However, the bottom line is your partner, your bottom line is A, is your partner able to live permanently with your level of imperfection? And B, are you able to live permanently with your partner's imperfections? I want you also to consider that there may be non-negotiables. In other words, there may be some things that you won't want to negotiate with. The first thing that jumps out at me from this passage is let him show. That's the first thing that jumps out at me. Let him show. Verse 13. Again, people are always showing you who they are. Um, this young girl was showing her fiancé who she was. Joanne was constantly showing um, Roland who she was, but Roland was not seeing. Sometimes, like Roland, we don't believe them when they show us who they are. Here, here is a series of questions that you may want to honestly answer for yourself. One, good conduct. Who is wise? This is what James says. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct. So the first thing you're going to be looking at um, while this person doesn't even know you're interested in them is their good conduct. That is what you're looking for. No, you're not looking for how muscular he is. No, you're not looking at how sexy she is. You're not looking at, at, at how he is and how eyelash. You're not looking at that. You're looking for good conduct. From your observation, does he or, does he or she allow others or other people of the complementary sex to get unreasonably close. If their conduct is as such that they would allow people of the complementary sex, and mind you, I say complementary sex, I do not, I do not believe in opposite sex. I don't believe females are opposite to me. I believe they complement me. It's a nice complementary fit. Yeah? Um, so when when if people of the complementary sex are getting too close to her and she's allowing it and she's flirty, flirty and, he, and he's allowing it or he, you know, he's like the, 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 the man, he's a Dan, then you have to watch that because those things will go right into marriage and he will remain that way with others and you would have a problem with that. It is not going to go away without divine spiritual deliverance. So, what is his or her conduct when he or she is experiencing an extreme emotion? That's another thing. So apart from the way they are with members of the complementary sex, what about when they're experiencing an extreme emotion? Are they emotionally intelligent? The kind of person you might be looking for, might, you might want an emotionally intelligent person. Now, if, if, if you decide you can live with someone who is, is just um, um, whatever impulse comes along, they do. If you know you can live with that, then so be it. 
God will allow you to choose that person. But I'm suggesting to you that you need to know. You need to know before what they do when they're angry. You need to see that before, how they react to others when they are aroused, how they react to me when we probably shouldn't be engaged in certain things, how they react to me. No, um, you need to know when they're experiencing grief, how, how they react. You need to know about them when they're experiencing pride or depression or fear. You need to know whether he's going to run away or, or, or whether she's going to you know, do some crazy things when she's experiencing fear. A friend of mine told me some time ago, um, they were discussing a scenario and they said, if it is, you know, someone comes upon you and your girlfriend and they point a gun at you and they, they, they say to both of you, get in the car. We ask, what will you do? <laughs> My friends say, I will run. And then we ask, so, so what about your girlfriend? They said, well, let, let she don't run now. Nah. In a nice Trinidad twang, let she don't run now. Nah. In other words, if she doesn't know how to run, then that's her business. When he's frightened, he will run. And he's showing you this before. And some of, some, some, some of our potential um, spouses, the people we're looking at, when they are fearful, they do some weird things. So you need to know these things. You need to see them before. These are all keys to unmasking people. Don't wait until you get married to see it. What have you learned, apart from all these things, generally about this person's conduct? What are people saying? What are people predominantly saying? If everybody is saying a particular thing, you need to take note. Now, he's going to be good to you. She's going to be good to you. But pay attention to what is happening around them. You can see what they are showing. Can you live with this for the rest of your life? How do you measure up? Are you the person for the kind of person you want? My second point, just two points today, um, meekness of wisdom from verse 13. What is his or her predisposition? What are they predisposed to do? What are they most likely to do when others give them other ideas or different ideas? Is it that they will not accept any idea from anybody else? Is it that he or she is always right? I don't have to read and spell for you today. You know where I'm going with this. If you are seeing before you are interested in this person that he or she is always right, do you think that will magically change when you say, I will? It, it won't. <laughs> it won't. Unless, of course, this person is, is, is delivered miraculously or divinely delivered, this person is going to remain the same. So if you know you can live with that, then go right ahead. If you know you can live with somebody, someone who is always right. Um, again, does he or she readily esteem others worthy of more than he or she is worthy of? Does he or she readily esteem others more worthy than he or she is worthy of? The word of God tells us about this. And it speaks to meekness. And humility. Some people listed that they want somebody who is humble, you know. So if that is what you, that's the only thing you can live with, then note you can see this before. Can't you? Does your prospect use knowledge properly? In other words, is your prospect wise? Wisdom is the proper use of knowledge. And if your prospect is in the habit of doing things that are wise, then perhaps you say, okay, then we have that one checked off. Uh, it may not be a non-negotiable. It might not be, but for others, it might be that, hey, I need this, this or nothing. I can't live with, with, with somebody who's not wise because I'm going to submit to this person or this person is going to have my life in their hands. So I want to be careful. <clears throat> Another thing is, are you satisfied with his or her philosophy in life. And some people have some weird philosophies that you have to look out for. If you can live with these philosophies, find there is a philosophy that says, get rich quick or die trying. If you like that, if that's your cup of tea, then go, you go ahead. If their philosophy is, if you can't be good, be quick, then again, go ahead. If you can live with that. 
it, if, if the philosophy, if their philosophy is, it's not wrong if you don't get caught. <laughs> that isn't going to magically change when you get married. People generally don't look at this. I don't know what people look at when they're going to get married. I mean, I, 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 I wasn't a perfect one, and neither my spouse or, 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 or I were perfect when we were making our choices. In fact, if so, she... <laughs> I don't know if she would have chosen me, you know? But if your perspective, if, if their thought, another thing is if their thought pattern and ideologies um, are not consistent with truth as opposed to reality, then you might have a little challenge in your hands. So I'm asking you, does your perspective's thought pattern and ideologies, um, is it consistent with truth? versus reality. Now, reality is something that is actually happening. Reality is what is in your face, what shows. Um, um, truth is that overarching principle that trumps all reality. I'll give you some examples um, while, while I speak. Is he or she prone to making permanent decisions based on temporary reality? Like being attacked, that's a reality. <laughs> Sometimes you could really be attacked, you know, but, but it's a temporary reality. When, 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 when that presents itself to your potential spouse, um, what are they prone to do? Are they prone to make um, permanent decisions or decisions that will have permanent consequences based on that temporary reality of being attacked? Do they burn bridges? Do they get in a brawl? Do they get in a fight? Do they kill people? Do they, or, or they, uh, uh, from their language, do they sound like if they could kill people? I don't, I don't know what else to tell you if you're seeing this. You know, why are people saying you can't see? You could see clearly when they're being seduced, even by seduced by you, before it's appropriate to have sexual relations. If, if they're being seduced, which, which is a temporary reality, when they are being seduced, do they go and bind up their spirits with someone else? Because that's what the word of God says you do when you, when, you are, um, when you have any kind of sexual activity. Spirits are bound together. Do they risk disease when they are seduced? Do they risk inconvenient pregnancy when they are seduced, when they are being dared, or when they are feeling daring, which is temporary, which is a reality that is temporary, do they risk life? When they are, or if they are traumatized, or jilted like I was when I was 17, or if they are being cheated upon, which is temporary, which is a temporary reality, do they harbor then suicidal thoughts? When they are out of a job, which is again a temporary reality, do they, do they turn to illegal means to, to, to get an income? In spite of fear and anxiety, feelings to eat all the time, laziness, fatigue, worrying challenges ahead of them when they face those things, is he or she courageous or prayerful? Is he or she disciplined or diligent? Is he or she able to rest in or at peace? While these situations are reality, they are temporary. The truth is that God is able to deliver. God is able to protect. God is able to satisfy. And that's the truth. Do they lean on these things? A wise prospective spouse will not only know that, but would react appropriately. You can see what they are showing you. Can you live with this for the rest of your life? How do you measure up? Are you the person for the kind of person you want? These are some filters through which masks would find it difficult to survive. Join us for part two of how to unmask a potential partner for some more thought-provoking insight. Let us see what they are showing us.
Part 2 will cover bitterness and envy, boasting and lying, earthly wisdom. See you next time. Let's go.